Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to talk about how to protect against ransomware. So let's get the obvious out of the way. There's no magic box, there's no magic product that you can just buy and it fixes everything magically. So when it comes to protecting against malware or ransomware or any kind of threat, it all goes back to the basics. Attacks happen on a daily basis, it doesn't matter if you're an SMB or a Fortune 500 company. All companies are more or less attacked every day and some are successful and some is less successful. And just because you're an SMB doesn't mean that you don't have anything of value. And just because you're a company with 10,000 plus employees, it doesn't mean that you are safe. Ransomware attacks is something that we see is growing all the time and they become more and more advanced. And just keep in mind, ransomware doesn't necessarily mean that they just encrypt your files. It can also have to do with like stealing data performance for crypto mining. It can also be stealing your data to actually sell your data as well. So ransomware has evolved. They don't only expect you to pay to get your products back. They can actually use your data to extort you. They can use your compute power to do like crypto mining and so make money. Some organizations are target more than others. Sadly, healthcare is amongst the most targeted ones because medical records actually are more valuable than credit card information. And the other branches or things that are commonly attacked is, well, we see it now with like solar winds, meaning supply chains attacks. So you as a supplier is actually not the main target, but your customers is the main target for these attacks. And you also have like the, the, old, the old targets like the financial service like banks and trading points and so on. When it comes to healthcare and financial services and so on, they are normally regulated and requires to follow specific regulatory requirements. Such as uh, PCI DSS or HIPAA or maybe ISO 27001 etc etc. So these best practices that I'm going to talk about, they are included in these regulatory requirements. So it's nothing new, it's nothing fancy. So why is company breached? Well, for small companies, maybe they don't really have an IT team. Maybe the IT guy do everything for IT and security maybe isn't the main priority. Security has more or less be a no-sayer within the company. And I want it to be an enabler for you to enable the company to do nice things like moving to a public cloud or, or exposing services to the internet and releasing new things. But small companies normally don't have large organizations and the people that are working within these organizations, they have a lot of other stuff to do as well. Many organizations also have outsourcing. And just because you're outsourcing things, it doesn't mean that the outsourcing partner enables all the security features just because they offer them. You actually need to, well, tell the outsourcing partner what you need and you actually need to pay for it. So outsourcing partners normally have all the capabilities that you need, but you need to have it in your contract and you need to pay for it. If not, they will not enable it. And of course, this is true for public clouds as well. Just because you're in AVS or in Azure, they don't protect your data. Azure and AVS and the public cloud vendors, they protect their infrastructure. Your data is not their concern. So you need to protect your own data and your own compute powers and so on. So even if you have something in the public cloud, you need to take actions to actually have a secure environment. A common way why you're not patching things is because uptime is king. Meaning if you're lacking redundancy or if you don't have any service windows, your stuff doesn't get patched. And that's a nightmare because most ransomware or most attacks happens either if your systems is not patched or it's account takeover. So patching your systems are key and you need to make sure that you have service windows, you have redundancy so you can actually patch your things and don't be afraid of like a five minute downtime. It doesn't hurt. It shows that you have something that is secure and that you care about your customers. So make sure to have service windows and actually patch your systems. Large company also face one other issue that small companies doesn't really face and that's legacy equipment. 
large companies they do mergers and acquisitions and then you have multiple systems over a long period of time. It may take like a year to find a target architecture for a large company. That means that you have double systems during one year. And with mergers and acquisitions comes layoff, meaning you have redundant staff. So maybe not all your systems has an application owner or like an application manager. So you don't really know what they're used for. You don't know how they work. So you don't patch it because you don't want to break something. And this can be a real nightmare because if this goes on for a long period of time, you have more and more legacy and legacy. Well, that's really hard to protect if you don't know something exists. How long does it actually take before a company notices a breach? Well, according to IBM, we are talking about almost 200 days. And I don't mean when something is starting to encrypt, because if some ransomware is encrypting your stuff, normally you see it quite fast, because then you have panic. But ransomware may not be like the first step in an attack. It normally is one of the last step, meaning you have already mapped out the network, you have taken what you want, and now it's time to let people know that you're in the network and get additional payouts from it. So don't expect ransomware to, to just start encrypt your files right away. Ransomwares and so on can be within the network for a long period of time to make sure that it's spreading across your network. So when I say it's almost 200 days before a breach is noticed, that's in average and this is from IBM. There is a lot of different ways and not all companies tell us that they are breached, they don't report it. So this is really hard to figure out, but let's just assume that uh, attacks are staying in the network longer than you expect. So how do you protect yourself? Well, as I said before, there is a multi-layer security approach to actually be protected. And assume that you will be attacked, assume that you will be compromised, assume that you are actually under attack and that if you haven't already been, you will be. And I would say like this, if you haven't already been attacked by ransomware or malicious stuff, well, either you don't know about it or you haven't worked in this industry long enough to notice it. So the first thing that you need to make sure to do is to patch everything. Make sure to use the patches from the vendors. Install them. Take the downtime. Take your time to patch things. And you need to try to automate it. Meaning you need to use applications to patch your things. You need to ask the vendor, how can we automate this patch? Because when you have a large environment, it's really hard to patch everything in time. And if you're not able to patch everything within time, well, start to look on things like IPS to help you with the patching. And to be able to patch everything, well, then you need to know what's in your network, what's in your organization. So you need to have an asset manager. If you don't have an asset manager, make sure to get one, even if it's as simple as Excel. I mean, Excel is good for a lot of things, but not really for asset management because you need to figure out what sort of operating system, what sort of patch systems, what sort of IP addresses, who is the owner, who is responsible for this application or this product. So make sure to have an asset system that you can have your inventory and then make sure that everything on this inventory is patched. It's a lot easier if you get like, this is a new exploit, it happens to these sort of products and then you can check in your asset management and see if you have these sort of things. One key aspect of applications is users. All applications normally have users. Users have accounts. Make sure to use multi-factor authentication on everything, especially stuff that you have in public cloud, like Office 365. Office 365 is great, everyone is using it, but make sure to have an MFA on it. If not, there is a really good chance that you will be compromised because if someone has your account, it's a lot easier to get into things. And as everyone is working remotely now, will you really see if someone is using another person's account? So make sure to use multi-factor authentication on everything. So a key of containing ransomware or malicious things is segmentation. So make sure that your network is segmented. 
if you haven't already segmented your network with the basic things, I mean, I'm not talking about zero trust and micro segmentation and so on. Start with basic segmentation and then you work your way up to zero trust or micro segmentation. But don't try to go for a zero trust right away. Make sure to start already today to segment your network, at least between your clients and your resources. That's the minimum that you can well have. And then, like DM said, production separate from development network. Maybe you should have a different finance network. Maybe you should have a different network for, well, printers, scanners, light bulbs, whatever. Segment your network so you have inspection points. Because if you segment your network, you can put the inspection points and applicate like IPS. Or at least you would get logging when something is traversing different segments and you can control what is able to go between different segments. So segmentation is key for any type of attacks, especially ransomware that moves laterally. So it's not only like a parameter firewall is not enough. You need to have segments and you need to have protections within your network to actually have these inspection points. A lot of the traffic nowadays is encrypted with like HTTPS, meaning it's really hard for a traditional firewall to actually see this type of traffic. So make sure to have some sort of endpoint protection because then you can see the traffic before it's sent out from the client and is encrypted. So it's key to have some sort of endpoint protection as well as you have your firewalls, your IPS, etc, etc. And keep in mind, endpoints is not only laptops, it's also cell phone, tablets. And think about your bring your own device. If you have bring your own device, make sure to segment them from your corporate devices because you don't really have control over bring your own devices or maybe you have if you're using MDM system etc but still maybe you should uh, have them in a separate network so you can have uh, access to different resources depending on what sort of device that you're using if you have your corporate device it's normally a lot more protected than a bring your own device and therefore you can grant more permission to that one the key of any forensic and actually try to figure out how did a breach happens is logs. Make sure to protect your logs. And by that I mean send them to a central location. Use a centralized time, meaning NTP, so all the logs are correlating so it's easy to find a pattern. And it's really important that the logs cannot be compromised. So you need to have something that you cannot write over etc. Maybe you should move them to, well, something that is not directly connected to the network. I mean, it needs to be connected to the network to get all the logs, but you should protect your logs because you need your logs if you're going to do some sort of forensic. So the last line of defense of any like ransomware or malware, etc. That's backups. You may need to reinstall some systems from scratch and some you may restore from backups. So make sure to have backups that is actually working, meaning you need to test your backups and you need to have your backups protected. I mean, if a ransomware comes into your company, they are so smart that they try to go after file shares, they try to reach like backup systems and so on. So the ransomware guys or the bad guys, they don't want you to be able to come back online in a quick matter. And backup may be a really quick way back. I mean, keep in mind that the, the malware or the, the malicious things can be in your network for a long period of time. So it's not cleaned, but at least maybe you can get up and running. Because if you get hit by ransomware, don't expect to be back up and running in, in like a few hours. It may take days. It may take weeks. So this can be really costly if you don't know what you're doing and if you don't have a plan for this. So I think this is it for this video. I hope you did learn something and this is just the basic things about how to protect against ransomware. I can do some more videos about this and go more in depth but this is a general overview of what you should expect and what you should have for protection to be well better off than you was, were before. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.